Okay, this is tutorial one. We are going to make an app in which we have a button and a label so that when we click the button, it changes the label to say, Hello World. So, let's get started. We're going to be coding in Swift with Xcode 7.2, but really any version of Xcode 7 or higher should be the same. So, create a new Xcode project. We're going to use a single view application, product name, uh, hello, and really you can fill out whatever you want in here, just make sure this is set to Swift, and click next. I'm going to create this folder on my desktop, but you can save it anywhere you'd like. And um, we're going to get right into it with the difference between these two. This is main.storyboard, which is it's the screen of the iPhone. So whatever we put on main.storyboard is going to appear on the screen. And viewcontrollers.swift is going to be the code that controls elements that are on the screen. So with main.storyboard selected, I'm going to click on this little dog-eared uh, piece of paper, which is called the File Inspector, and I'm going to uncheck Use Auto Layout, Use Auto Layout, and disable the class sizes, which is a simpler thing for us to deal with for a first app. Um, if you're going to make a real app, you want to learn how to use Auto Layout. It's much simpler for making um, apps with many different sizes for different sized phones. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to put a button and a label right onto the storyboard. So with object library selected, we are going to find a label and drag that onto the storyboard. And we should widen this out here so that we have a little bit more room. And next, we are going to drag in a button. So here is our button. So now we have a label and a button, but they don't do anything yet. So by clicking the Show Assistant Editor, that is the um, two circles, this enables us to see the storyboard and see our code at the same time. I am going to click these little sidebar sliders to make ourselves a little bit more room. Now to connect the label, we need to control click drag right after the first curly brace into the UI view controller. So control, click and drag, and release. So we are going to call this my label one and it's going to be set to be an outlet. So now it's an outlet with a variable named mylabel1, which is a user interface label. Now for the button, we're going to drag to the space between the last two curly braces. So again, control, click, drag, and this time we are going to choose action because we want our button method to do something. And we'll call this my button one. Okay, so this is the button method and any code that we type in here will, will happen when the button is clicked. So let's start out by saying my label one dot text in other words, my label one, which is text, is going to be equal to, and now let's have it say something like, hello world. And you can write whatever you want in these quotes. So, now we are going to run our app. And this is going to compile or build the app in the simulator. And the very first time you run this, it actually takes a really long time uh, to build it, to build even a simple app like this. Okay, so here we go. When we click our button, 
Now it says, hello world. If you want to make the app look a little bit prettier, we have a lot of options. We're done with the code here, so we can close it out. And we can slide back in our sidebars. And let's say we wanted to make the background a different color. So then we click View. Go to the Attributes Inspector and change the background color to red. Let's say we want to change the label text. Well, we can center it. We can change it to a different font. For example, we could do a custom font and choose papyrus and make it a little bigger. Uh, whatever you'd like to do. And our button, we can also make this a different color. We can change the font. There's a whole bunch of choices. But what I'd like to show you how to do is to make the button a custom button that is a picture. So I am going to find a couple of pictures here. I have a picture of Mercury. Drag that into the place just underneath the products and I'm going to make sure that this button, copy items if needed, is checked so that it will drag the photo into your folder. And let's do the same thing with a second image, uh, like this picture of Venus. And we don't need this anymore. Again, make sure that button is checked. Okay, so now if we want to make the button a custom button, we click on it and go to default image and click on Mercury. So now that's really not a good size for a button. So if you go to the ruler, we can change its position. Let's put it in the upper left hand corner. So an X coordinate of zero and a Y coordinate of zero. And let's make it a little bit smaller, 60 pixels by 60 pixels. And now it's at position zero, zero, and it's much smaller. Now we can just simply drag it down to here. So now this is a button. So if we click this, it will change our label text. Let's say you want to just add a picture. Well, down here we can do an image view and drag that onto the storyboard. And if we click on this in the attributes inspector, and choose a different picture like Venus. Now Venus will show up in the image view and you can rearrange it. Stretch it out, do whatever you want with it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more interesting little code tidbit. If we click back on the show assistant editor and we can slide these out of the way. Um, it's kind of not that nice that it says label when we run our app. So in the super view did load method, we can say my label one dot hidden, this is a Boolean statement, equals true. So when the app first sets up, it's going to use this override function and it's going to take this label and make it hidden. But we don't want it to be hidden when we click the button. So in the button method, we can say my label one dot hidden equals false. In other words, not hidden anymore. So when we run our app again, we'll stop the instance that was already running. We shouldn't see the label until we click the button, and our button is now Mercury. It's a good sign. Um, there it is, and the label isn't in existence, and you can see because of auto layout, uh, it doesn't look like what it looks there. And when we click the button, it now says, hello world. Thanks for watching, and I should have a new 
tutorial about how to add two numbers that a user enters into a text field soon.